good old U.S. of A. The land of the free and the home of the brave. The Melting Pot, Merca. Brought to you by Chuck E. Cheese, only on Fox Network. <laughs> Just kidding about the last part. Whatever your opinion is about the states, there's no doubt that this nation is a powerful and important one. Maybe the most powerful. And President Joe Biden says that there's a new golden age coming right around the corner. Any minute now, coming right up. But can China, Russia, or North Korea do anything to stop the US from booming again? From its massive army to the helicopters of doom, Here's 20 reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. <sighs> Number 20. Huge Army with 1.5 million soldiers. In 2021, 69% of the American public said that they had faith in the military. This made it one of the most trusted institutions in the country. Part of the reason why people like the military is because of the sacrifices their countrymen and women have to make. At times, this has meant giving up everything, even their lives. So how did it all begin? Well, on June 14th of 1775, the Second Continental Congress voted to make George Washington the leader of a unified Continental Army. So technically, the United States has had an army for a year longer than it's been a country. Becoming a five-star general is the best thing that a soldier can hope to accomplish. There's only been five five-star generals ever, though. The five-star rank didn't come into being until 1944, and the last person to get it, Omar Bradley, died in 1981. President Dwight D. Eisenhower was the most well-known of these five men. George Washington used to be a five-star general, but after he died, he was made a six-star general, which is like some kind of god-level achievement. Think of it as military sainthood. But the US Army also looks into some weird stuff. In 1978, the U.S. Army started the Stargate Project, a secret group that looked into using psychic abilities. Up until 1995, the project was still going on, and it could still be operating in secret today. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. This is one crazy prototype weapon that the US decided it could show off to the public to give them an idea of the kind of stuff that we've been trying out over the years. This one dates back to the Cold War, but needless to say, the technology advancements since then have been insane. Just the weapons we know about are mind-blowing, but imagine all the secret weapons that have been deployed recently in places like Area 51. What kinds of new weapon tech are going to be revealed? Are they already controlling our minds? As always, comment down below with the hashtag RareTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19. Boeing AH-64 Apache. The AH-64 Apache helicopter is, overall, maybe the best weapon in the United States Army. It might seem strange that the best weapon for a land force is a helicopter, but air power is the most important thing in modern wars, even for infantry. The AH-64 Apache and its variations are likely to stay vital on the battlefield for a very long time. This deadly helicopter has a lot of insane weapons, like a 30mm cannon, Hellfire missiles, and sensors that are the best that money can buy. It has enough firepower, speed, and range to hit the enemy long before US ground troops can get involved. During Desert Storm and the recent wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, it worked pretty perfectly. Tanks and armored vehicles are easy for the Apache helicopter to destroy, and it can also be used to hunt down insurgents. It's most often used to provide air support for ground troops, who like it because they don't have to rely on US Air Force or US Navy planes. And the troops on the ground like the chaos it can cause among the enemy. Number 18. M1A2 Sep Tank. 
The M1A2 SEP is the new version of the famous M1A2 Abrams main battle tank. It's known as one of the best main battle tanks in the world, and it's the mainstay of the US Armed Forces. Since the 1980s, M1 Abrams has been around in its most basic form. During the first Gulf War, the showpiece tank was used in Operation Desert Storm to destroy most of Iraq's Soviet-made armor. Over time, the M1 Abrams was sent to Afghanistan and Iraq, where it fought in battles. Very few Abrams tanks have ever been destroyed. These things are basically kinda indestructible. It has amazing technology and armor made of depleted uranium. It weighs more than 60 tons, and it has a complex gas turbine engine that gives it a top speed of nearly 70 kilometers per hour. Its main weapon is a powerful 120 millimeter gun that can break through the armor of a Russian T-90 or Chinese Type 99 tank. But let's hope out that we don't have to find out about how it really performs against those in an actual full-out war, because let's face it, World War III will probably get rid of all of us. Number 17. M109A6 Paladin Self-Propelled Howitzer A howitzer is a long-range weapon that's in between an artillery gun and a mortar. Howitzers are one of the four main types of modern artillery, along with long-barreled guns, mortars, and rocket artillery. The old M109 self-propelled howitzer, which was first used by the U.S. Army in the early 1960s, has recently been replaced by the M109A6 Paladin, and this is a howitzer. The M109A6 Paladin can fire Excalibur rounds that are guided by GPS or a laser. This artillery system is one of the most dangerous weapons used in war. Number 16. Tow Anti-Tank Guided Missile Most experts say that the Russian have the best anti-tank missiles, but the US military is no slouch. After nearly 45 years of use, the Tow Anti-Tank Guided Missile is still a deadly weapon. It's shown itself to be very effective. Countless enemy tanks, most of which were made in Russia, have been destroyed by Tow anti-tank missiles. During the war in Vietnam, it was first used against Soviet-built tanks with devastating effect. You really don't want to be sitting in a tank with a Made in Russia label on it while one of these things is anywhere nearby. The tow can still destroy even the best protected tanks. Some US Army vehicles like the HMMWV, M2, and M3 Bradley are equipped with tow missiles. Also, the US Army has a M1134, which is based on the Stryker 8-wheeled armor vehicle and is used to carry anti-tank missiles. Even though it's been in use for 45 years, tow is still being improved and new versions are always coming out. Tows are top attack missiles that detonate just above the tank's thin top armor. Also, there's versions of the tow missile systems that can destroy bunkers. This version is used against buildings and fortifications. Basically, there's nowhere to hide with this badass around. Number 15. M2 Heavy Machine Gun the M2 heavy machine gun is probably one of the most famous weapons of the U.S. Army. John Browning designed it at the end of World War I, and the U.S. military started using it in 1933. Many wars have been fought with the M2 heavy barrel machine gun. The M2HB was the standard version for infantry on armored vehicles, tanks, and helicopters. The M2 is a great weapon that's worked very well for generations. It's very effective against infantry, boats, light fortifications, helicopters, and and vehicles with little or no armor. The M2 heavy machine gun is still used today even though it's more than 80 years old. The fact that the same weapon is still widely used in the US military today shows how well it was made. The effective range of a 50 BMG is over a mile. It can break through walls made of concrete and eat through a forest. Special operations forces who need to hit hard and fast like it because of its firepower and range. This gun can be attached to a car, boat, or plane, or it could just be put on a tripod, making it one of the most versatile pieces of equipment in any army. Number 14. V-2 Stealth Bombers 
These heavy bombers with bat-like wings can carry both regular and nuclear weapons and are some of the most fearsome planes ever built. They just look terrifying and futuristic because that's exactly what they are. 20 of these war planes fly out of Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, but they can also take off from bases on Diego Garcia or the island of Guam in the Pacific. In wartime, a B-2 can carry two GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrators, which is the biggest non nuclear bombs the U.S. has. These 30,000 pound, 30 foot long bombs are made to hit deep into the ground and destroy missile and command complexes that are out of reach of other non-nuclear weapons. The B-2 can also carry a variety of other weapons and it's been used in wars in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Northrop Grumman had to come up with all the parts for the B-2 from scratch. On that list were tools, a software lab, composite materials, special test equipment, and computer systems and 3D modeling. There was nothing they could borrow from other designs, which makes this plane really unique. The B-2 is always there the first night the U.S. goes to war. This is the first line of attack, and it's a very scary one for the enemy. On one night, the B-2 went into enemy territory to help with Operation Allied Force in Serbia, Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, Operation Iraqi Freedom in Iraq, and Operation Odyssey Dawn and Operation Odyssey Lightning twice in Libya. The B-2 is one of the most durable planes in the world. It's also the only plane that has a long range, can fly without being detected, and can carry a lot of weight, meaning it's kinda almost invincible. For example, during the first eight weeks of the war against Serbia, the B-2s flew less than 1% of all missions, but they were able to destroy 33% of the total targets. Number 13, B-52 Bombers. The B-52 is the plane the Air Force can't seem to let go. The first Boeing B-52s went into service on June 29th of 1955 at Castle Air Force Base in California. They were long-range, subsonic, jet-powered strategic bombers with 185 feet of wingspan. They were given to the 93rd Bombardment Wing. During the Cold War, the Vietnam War, Desert Storm, and the Global War on Terror, B-52s were very important. The Air Force recently made the decision to keep the B-52 in service until the 2040s. At that time, some of the B-52 airframes will be close to 90 years old, which would make the plane much older than the people who fly them. At about 58 years old, the youngest B-52 still flying are the H models, and the last one rolled out to the Air Force in 1962. In contrast, around 40% of the men and women in the Air Force are under 26 years old. This awesome plane, nicknamed the Big Ugly Fat Fellow, there's also a rude version of this nickname, but you'll have to look that one up on your own, has eight Pratt & Whitney turbofan jet engines and is the only airplane currently in use with eight engines. It can fly 8,800 miles without refueling and can carry 70,000 pounds. Number 12, B-1 Bombers. The B-1 is the backbone of America's long-range bomber force. It has the largest conventional payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the whole Air Force's inventory. It can quickly send large numbers of precision and non-precision weapons anywhere in the world and at any time to the front yard of the enemy. When it was first made in the 1970s, the B-1A was meant to replace the B-52, but now they just work happily alongside one another. In the middle of the 1970s, four prototypes of this strategic bomber with a long range and high speed were built and tested. However, the program was canceled in 1977, so the bomber never went into production. Flight tests kept going on until 1981. The B-1B holds nearly 50 world records in its class for things like speed, payload, range, and time to climb. In December of 1998, during Operation Desert Fox, the B-1B was used for the first time in combat. It helped with operations against Iraq. Six B-1s were also used in Operation Allied Force in 1999. Number 11, F-22 Fighter Stealth. 
thanks to something known as thrust vectoring, the F-22 Raptor is very, very fast. Unlike most jets, the F-22's two Pratt & Whitley F-119 engines have vectoring nozzles in the exhaust that can change thrust more than 20 degrees up and down. This is one reason why it can do things that no other jet of the same size can do. The Raptor took its first flight in 1997 after being tested in a wind tunnel for more than 44,000 hours and having thousands of engineers work on it all year long. Before the F-22 could be launched, it had to go through over 3,500 test flights. Running the F-22A costs a staggering $68,362 per hour. The bill includes the cost of ownership changes in engineering over time, the cost of fuel and maintenance, crew staffing, and all the other stuff. But still, that's probably not a lot of miles to the gallon when it all adds up. Even though you can't get all the way across the country in 1,800 miles, that's a pretty good range for a fighter plane. The plane has two fuel tanks on the outside that are used for when it's being refueled mid-air. Even though the F-22 can fly in a stealthy way, it isn't completely invisible to radar screens. The size of the radar signature is about the same as that of a bumblebee though, so you're probably going to have a lot of false alarms if you live somewhere with flying insects. For those who may not know, that's literally everywhere. And this bumblebee packs a particularly nasty sting. When you look at the Raptor from the front, you can see that the wings and horizontal stabilizer are perfectly aligned. This is what makes the plane less noticeable to radar. The F-22 is one of the few American fighter planes that will never leave the country. To protect its stealth technology, by law, the jet can't be sold to other countries, not even our allies. For once, the US can't be accused of only being in it for the money. Although the military is to protect our money and this is that, but okay, yeah. Number 10, Ohio-class guided missile submarines. The U.S. Navy's four nuclear-powered guided missile submarines from the Ohio class, also called SSGNs, are some of the most powerful, in-demand, and versatile weapons in the world. People know that these huge secretive submarines can carry up to 154 Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles and dozens of special operations frogmen into contested territory to do their quiet business. but. They can do a lot more than that. A decade and a half ago, the US Navy was testing amazing new features that it would later add to its four SSGNs that hadn't been converted yet. This included a very complicated but obscure proof of concept exercise that helped identify the SSGN idea for the seagoing service. The 1994 Nuclear Posture Review led to the decision to turn Ohio-class SSBNs into SSGNs. The review found that only 14 of the 18 Ohio-class boats were needed to meet the United States' nuclear deterrence needs. Eight years later, the Navy started changing the USS Florida, USS Georgia, USS Michigan, and USS Ohio, the four oldest Ohio-class submarines, to the new design. And these four now have amazing new abilities to replace their former nuclear powers. This one includes a kind of mothership command center, and another one which is one of the world's deadliest and most sophisticated mobile drone launching crafts. Number 9. U.S. Navy Supercarrier the USS Gerald R. Ford is the first aircraft carrier in her class for the U.S. Navy. The ship is named after Gerald Ford, who was the 38th President of the United States. During World War II, Ford served in the Navy and fought in the Pacific Theater on the light aircraft carrier Monterey. It cost a whopping $13.3 billion to build the new aircraft carrier that bears his name, making it the most expensive one in the whole world. The USS Gerald R. Ford is 333 meters long, 41 meters wide at the waterline, and 76 meters tall. The flight deck is 78 meters wide. The USS Gerald Ford can reach a top speed of 56 kilometers per hour, or just over 30 knots. It's got its own shops. You can even get a Starbucks coffee there. I wonder if all the tough Navy SEALs are really only there because they love pumpkin spice latte so much. The ship has two upgraded A-1B nuclear reactors. Yeah, that's right, this is an aircraft carrier powered by two nuclear reactors. Number 8. The USS Curtis Wilbur 
The USS Curtis Wilbur is the fourth destroyer in the Arleigh Burke class. Curtis Wilbur was named after Curtis D. Wilbur, who was President Calvin Coolidge's 43rd Secretary of the Navy. In 2016, she was part of Destroyer Squadron 15 and based in Yokosuka, Japan. She was made by Bath Ironworks in Bath, Maine. She was put into service on March 19th of 1994 in Long Beach, California. Curtis Wilbur took part in RIMPAC 94, a large international exercise that took place in the summer of 1994 and included more than 30 ships as well as a number of submarines and air assets based on both carriers and land. During this exercise, she was in charge of the air defense for the force. Curtis Wilbur was the first ship in its class and only the second ship ever to pass the test with no faults. Also, in October of 1994, the Curtis Wilbur was the first ship with an Aegis system to let women join the crew. Curtis Wilbur left on her first Western Pacific deployment on July 31st of 1995. She crossed the Pacific and went to the Persian Gulf. She helped with Operations Southern Watch and Vigilant Sentinel while she was with the United States Naval Forces Central Command. During the 100 days she was in theater, she was in charge of air warfare, surface warfare, undersea warfare, and strike warfare. Curtis Wilbur also helped enforce UN sanctions against Iraq as a member of the U.S. 5th Fleet Expeditionary Task Force. This is one busy warship. Number 7. Boeing LGM-30G Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile since the end of the Cold War, strategic nuclear deterrence has become less important. However, it's still the Air Force's top job. The LGM-30G Minuteman III, which was made in the 1960s, is still the most important part of America's nuclear deterrence. Around 450 of these missiles make up the land-based part of the so-called nuclear triad. Over the years, the long-lasting missile has been changed and improved by getting new rocket motors and better guidance systems. Even though the original plan was for the missile to have three multiple independent re-entry vehicles, each of which carried a nuclear warhead, the current version only has one 300 kiloton weapon. I'm using giant air quotes here. The US plans to keep improving this missile, but in the end it'll have to replace the Minuteman with a new ICBM. It's not a matter of if, but when. All technology becomes obsolete eventually, even if it's as great as this weapon. Number 6. Boeing F-15E Strike Eagle The F-15E Strike Eagle is the Air Force's fighter fleet long-range heavy hitter. The Air Force has 213 of these fighters. They replaced the General Dynamic F-111 Strike aircraft, which had been in service for a very long time. The Strike Eagle is mostly a strike plane, unlike its predecessor, the F-15CD, which was designed to be the best combat plane in the air. It can go much further and carry much more than any other fighter in the Air Force's stock. But even with its new air-to-ground role, the F-15E is still a great fighter. Like many of the Air Force's older planes, the F-15E will still be in use well into the 2030s. The service is updating the jets with new Raytheon APG-82 active electronically scanned array radars and other modern equipment. The upgrades will make the Strike Eagle useful until the 2030s, so the Air Force has no plans to replace these old jets. Number 5. 35,000 warships, how the U.S. Navy could win a war. The U.S. Navy has unveiled plans to equip all its destroyers with hypersonic missiles. Beset with project costs, overruns, and delays for quite some time, the U.S. Navy is currently faced with an increasingly aggressive and assertive Chinese Navy that has forced it to bring about a big deal of functional improvements to maintain its lead over the arch-rival Russia and the emerging one, China. And the way forward? Hypersonic missiles. Currently, the U.S. Navy with 293 ships is the most formidable Navy force in the world. Though very recent estimates suggest that the People's Liberation Army Navy has 350 battle force ships. Yet in terms of real power, technological strength, naval air power, nuclear missiles, submarines, destroyers, global outreach, and power projection, the U.S. Navy continues to be the most powerful. 
A hypersonic missile is one that exceeds Mach 5, which is somewhere around 3,800 miles per hour, and it's at least five times faster than the speed of sound. It's believed to be capable of irregular maneuvers as opposed to the simple parabolic trajectory of a cruise missile. It's believed that currently there is no functional defense system to stop an incoming hypersonic missile, and only four countries, the US, Russia, China, and India have been able to master this complex technology so far. But the first hypersonic tests by North Korea are rumored to be taking place. Number 4. The high-tech government facility built inside of a mountain. The US government doesn't want you to go on vacation to the Cheyenne Mountain Facility, which is a military complex and bunker for the Space Force. In fact, it doesn't want you or anyone anywhere near it. It's the headquarters for a number of military units, and it's in an unincorporated part of El Paso County, Colorado, near Colorado Springs. With its worldwide early warning system, the complex keeps an eye out for missiles, space systems, and foreign aircraft in the airspace of Canada and the US, and maybe aliens too. At the moment, the Cheyenne building is used to train employees and serve as a backup command center in case of emergency. This bunker is strong enough to stop a 30 megaton nuclear bomb from going off. The power, water, air conditioning, and other support systems work 99.999% of the time, even after a nuclear attack. Number 3. Boeing KC-135 The US Air Force is different from other air forces in the world because it can hit targets all over the world. American air power is able to perform its global policing missions largely because of the KC-135 aerial refueling tanker. That's not just true for the Air Force, the Navy and Marine Corps also use big wing tankers from the air arm to help them do their jobs. However, the KC-135 is very old, and it needs to be replaced soon, but this is a vital component to the military. Over the past 20 years, the Air Force has tried several times, but failed to update it. Part of the huge fleet of KC-135 tankers will eventually be replaced by the Boeing KC-46 project. Even though 179 KC-46 tankers will be added by 2028, most of the refueling fleet will still be made up of good old KC-135s. Number 2. Near light speed engine that breaks laws of physics. Space. It's way too big. Even if we went as fast as the universe permits us, it'd still take us years to get to the nearest star system. But David Burns, a NASA engineer, has been trying to figure out how we might be able to at least manage that much. He's made a plan for an engine that, in theory, could speed up to 99% of the speed of light without using any propellant. He hasn't given any details on how comfortable the flying conditions would be, however. Little known fact, it's not going a certain speed that kills you, it's the rate of acceleration that you have to get there. Burns uses a thought experiment to show how his idea works. He imagines a box with a weight inside that's attached to a line by a spring at each end. In a vacuum, like space, this would make the whole box shape, but the weight would still appear to be still. Overall, the box would keep moving in the same place, but if the weight got heavier in one direction, it would push harder in that direction, giving it more thrust. According to the principle of conservation of momentum, which says that a system's momentum stays the same when there's no outside forces acting on it, this shouldn't be possible. But there is a loophole in special relativity. Loopholes are my favorite kind of hole. Not that I keep a list of holes, that would be gross. Anyway, special relativity says that things get heavier as they move closer to the speed of light. So if you replace the weight with ions and the box with a loop, theoretically, the ions could move faster at one end of the loop and slower at the other. So this would generate a kind of perpetual motion that could go almost as fast as light speed. And a loophole with a loop in it, that's pretty neat, I approve. Number one. Space Force is the newest U.S. military branch. On December 20th of 2019, the Space Force came into being. The goal of the Space Force is to improve how U.S. forces fight and give decision makers more military options. About 16,000 military and civilian workers help with many different parts of the mission. They make sure that the U.S. keeps its space superiority, which is needed to protect against attacks from other countries. Their uniforms have a cool dark navy coat with a silver thread branding on the sleeves to show that they're all futuristic and that space is huge, huge, huge. 
Along the right side of the body, there are six silver buttons. This is because the Space Force is the sixth branch of the military. The Space Force seal, which is pressed into each button, is a grid-lined globe with a delta on top. Even though Space Force has only been around for a few years, it's already caught the attention of millions of people. Do you think anyone could defeat the United States? What will war in space be like for humanity? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.